Welcome back to the kitchen, everyone. Today I am sharing with you a tasty and safe way to make strawberry jam using the Presto Digital Electric Canner. Today's recipe is going to be step-by-step -step from the Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving. It's one of their first recipes in the book, Strawberry Jam. Now I have been waiting for the fruit truck to get their strawberries in. In fact, last I checked, they didn't have the dates finalized for when they'd be here yet. So you know what? We're just gonna go ahead and use some strawberries. I've had in the freezer for a while because my kids are getting sick and tired of peach jelly. In the spring when we got peaches, I made a whole bunch of peach scrap jelly and I haven't bought any other jellies or jams since. So it's time to kind of restock with something else. We're gonna do the strawberry jam so that at least we can alternate for those kiddos. A single batch of this recipe calls for eight cups of strawberries. Since I don't have fresh strawberries, they're not in season, I've been slowly picking up a bag of these organic sliced strawberries at Sam's Club every time I go. They're three pounds, so I'm thinking I'll use less than two bags. I've got more in the freezer, but this is all of the pectin I have to use. So we're gonna just start and we can always make more another time. I took my strawberries out of the freezer and put them in the fridge about 24 hours ago to thaw a little bit. So we're still gonna have some frozen ice crystals on here, but they're definitely going to be mashable. Although these days I do consider myself a bit of an expert when it comes to canning, jams and jellies tend to be my downfall. All my peach jellies were just a tad on the runny side. So today I'm going to um, use some tips that you all have given me so that I can come up with the best strawberry jam possible. So even though I'm going to be making two batches today, I'm going to make one at a time. We're using the Sure Gel, I'm just using the original pectin, and we are using these organic sliced strawberries from Sam's Club, regular sugar, and some lemon juice. I have two of these Presto Digital Electric Canners, and I'm starting with one today. If I get this one going and I've got more jam, I'll probably get the second one going as well. I do have to make sure mine are on um, different outlets so that I don't blow one of the breakers because they do take quite a bit of an energy. So I already went through and filled my canner with three quarts up to this bottom line of filtered water. This just helps keep my canner in good condition as well as my rings and my flat. I took some jelly jars actually out of storage. I inherited a lot of jars from one of my grandmothers and I have a friend who gave me quite a few too. Pretty much people know I will use jars if they give them to me. So I end up with a lot, but I haven't made a lot of jams and jellies. So this was an entire box I had set aside in the mudroom for probably a couple years. I already got them washed up and cleaned and it's a variety of ball, cur, I think there's some golden harvest jars in there, and then some miscellaneous ones that I couldn't find a name on. But we're gonna try them too. I think this might be Anchor. Kinda looks like an Anchor label. Which is a US glass company. They're a little bit shorter, but they still look good. So we're gonna fill these up with filtered water. Now to use my electric canner, I only need to fill them so that they don't tip over. But because we're going to water bath our preserves today, I want to be sure that I have enough hot water. So if I fill these pretty full, I might like I might luck out and get over an inch on the top with this hot water and not have to have some heated on the stove. So my Presto Digital Electric Canner comfortably fits nine half pints. Since this recipe for strawberry jam is for half pints, I'm going to always make sure I use half pint jars or smaller. If this recipe was for pints, then you could go up to pints, but since it isn't, I'm going to always stick with this size or smaller. Next step is to get my canner set up for with what I want to do. So I have a pressure canning option as well as the water bathing option. A lot of you have mentioned that you didn't realize you could water bath in here, and I still prefer to water bath in here for says the stove top because the stove top all the timing things are on me and this the electric the timers the things are all built in it there's a lot less user error in my opinion so we're going to go to boiling water can or water bath and this recipe is going to be for 10 minutes now even though some jam and jelly recipes call for five minutes 
I now do all my jams and jellies at at least 10 minutes. If the recipe is higher, do higher. Um, but at least 10 minutes because 10 minutes in the boiling water canner will actually also sterilize my jars. Yes, I did wash them as good as I could with hot soapy water. But like I said, a lot of these jars were given to me and... I never really know exactly what was going down with them. So if there's anything that I might have missed, it it's just an extra safety feature in my mind. So we're gonna set it to 10 minutes just by moving this dial around and either clicking the center or clicking play. Then it says to insert the jars. I did that. I'm gonna put the lid on next. And I made sure to take the regulator off. This is just for pressure canning. Shut the lid twist it and lock it and after it says insert jars I'm going to press the middle button or play again. Now it says it's warming up. Now it's time for me to get that strawberry jam going. So I need to decide what pot I'm using. Now I just retired my stainless soup pot which would be my ideal choice for this. So I'm going to use my new stainless pasta pot. I do have a few other different type pots that I'm nervous when I'm whisking and having all the things in there, I might wreck the coating. So I think the stainless pasta pot is going to be my best bet. Now, while the next step would typically be to clean my strawberries, I don't need to do that since they are already clean, they don't have any stems on them, and they um, were frozen. So I'm going to dump some in here, I'm not measuring yet, in the bottom of just a flat dish so I can do some strawberry mashing. The next step is to mash my strawberries with a potato masher. Now if you don't have a potato masher, you could certainly use a fork. You're just really going to have to get in there. Something that has held me back from doing canning like this is having the fruit of my own. So this last year I tried to really be a lot better about um, outsourcing some of the things that I either can't grow here or don't grow enough of. And strawberries, frankly, is one of those. Well, I do have a probably pretty decent strawberry bed. I have four kids and those strawberries are picked every morning. It's the first thing that goes and we don't usually end up with a lot left over. Certainly, I have never had enough to make jam. Now, one day would I like to have enough strawberries that I grew to make my own jam? You bet. I'd like enough strawberries to have enough strawberries for the whole year if I could. Now this recipe is going to take approximately eight cups of fresh strawberries mashed down to five cups of mashed strawberries. Now I'm going to have to do this probably a couple times to get the full five cups. I'm just going to add them to my pot as they're mashed to the consistency I like. I'm going to get a spoon. <laughs> three cups and I add some more strawberries and start these last two. Four cups. Five cups. So whenever you're making a recipe, especially when it comes to canning and um, water bath canning or pressure canning, it's really good to read just the whole recipe, all the tips, everything, because there's always valuable information in here. And even though you think something sounds unimportant, chances are if they mention it, there's a reason. So it said make sure you start, measure out your sugar before you start this to avoid any delays in cooking. So I'm like, all right. So before I start that, I'm gonna measure out my sugar. Now, it's not lost on me that with trying, let's move you guys. You wanna see me, not my mess over there. All right. It's not lost to me that when I am making recipes like this that call for a ton of sugar and I'm trying to eat healthier and healthier, um, it seems kind of counterproductive. But the truth of it is, if I am buying jams and jellies from the store, do I really think they have less sugar than what I'm making at home? And um, just because I'm making it this way today doesn't mean I will forever more. We're always learning new things, learning new tips. So for now, we're using plain old sugar. I'm measuring seven cups. Hopefully, I might have to open another bag. Oh my gosh, you guys. Oh, there's still some in the bottom. I thought I dumped all of it out. Now this is just what's hard on the bottom. <laughs> and we're gonna set that aside so it's ready. Oh my gosh, it's so much sugar. I love my new rugs. They're more like mats, 
but I find myself moving them around the floor so I can stand on them. So we're going to turn this on. The next things I'm going to be adding are my lemon juice and my pectin. So I'm going to go ahead and add my lemon juice. I have this on a high heat because I'm trying to bring it to a boil. And I'm just going to whisk this in. I did grab a whisk, but I'm okay holding this deep with the plastic handle. And then we're going to whisk the pectin in. So I'm just using one container for now. Okay, it's killing me not <laughs> doing more than one batch at a time. I could fit three batches in here, I bet. It's only like up to here and I will add sugar. All right, taking all your advice, one batch at a time for best results. All right, this strawberry lemon juice pectin mixture is just simmering. I was trying to think of the word. I'm like, not a boil, let's be for a boil. Um, we're starting to get some bubbles on the side, so I know it definitely looks a little more jam jelly-like, so that's awesome. And it says to get it to a good rapid boil, and then we're going to dump in our sugar. I'm going to dump in our sugar, and I'm going to just whisk it right in. Yes, all of it. I had to find my berry hot pads. <laughs> Alright, so it is boiling up quite a bit foaming quite a bit and when I stir it it's not coming back down so I know it's ready. I am using um, just a scraper type spatula to keep the sides from slopping up and we're going to take it off with the heat now. All right before we get our jars all loaded up I'm going to take some of this foam off the top. I know I'm not going to get it all but at least try to get what I can. Let's get some jars filled. All right, so my canner is all heated up, so I can take my jars out to fill them. Since I am water bathing, I am going to put the water from my jars right back in here. I don't really need to do anything special to do this. I can just kind of pick them up over the pot and dump it right back in. And then we're going to fill these jars up to a quarter inch of headspace. Let's see if I can get this a little closer. There we go. Got my rag with vinegar and I'm just gonna wipe off the rim this is just to make sure that I didn't slop any of that um, jam on the side. And then I've got my ring all ready. Ooh, these are so hot. My flat, I mean. And then my ring, we're gonna put this on. Now, because I'm using the electric canner, I do twist pretty tight on my jars, tighter than I used to just doing a regular water bath. I don't know exactly why that is. And back in it goes. It looks beautiful. Now the goal is to get the water back in the canner one inch above the jars. So if I get higher than that, then I'll toss some of that water. Just I'll toss it down the sink. Now you guys, anybody notice what step I missed? I even got it all out and ready. Saw it sitting there and went, why did I get that out again? What I forgot, I've got a bottle in front of my screen, you couldn't see it, but I could. What I forgot was to debubble my jars. Now with something like this, it's not huge end of the world, but I still want to at least attempt to debubble them. All right, this one I slopped all over. It's going to be a mess. Right there, that's why you wipe the rim of the jars. You've got me in your kitchen. <laughs> all right. 
All right, the first, whoop, I'll hold you up here. The first batch is eight half pints, and I just, I'm leaving that ninth one in there. It ended up being about exactly an inch above the water level, so let's get this canner going. And we're gonna click play, and there it heats up. We've got the canner beeping, saying it's done. It beeps, I think, 10 times. And so it ran 10 minutes, and then it cooled down, and it gives you a five minute mark when it's cooling down from there. I be sure, I am always sure this pipe is down um, before I go ahead and open it. And you can just hold this X for three seconds and it'll avoid everything you were doing too. Let's open it up. All right, we're gonna take this jam out. See how it looks. Looks really good, doesn't it? So I found a little, oh my gosh. I knocked over a jar, you guys. I've never done that. We're gonna set that one in a special spot. I found a little area I thought would work out of the way, but apparently I must've just hit a little bump in my towel when I set that down. So I put some towels down here on this little side table kind of out of the way thinking I can space out my jam and let it cool here for the next day. So you wanna space your jam far enough apart that air movement can get in here, about an inch maybe. And then I'm making sure there's no big, there's no big breezes here or anything. All right, <laughs> love that noise. So we've got eight jars. I'm hoping to get that other batch done. I need to switch over to supper mode because it's gonna be time to eat supper soon. So I probably won't get it started until after, which stinks. I was hoping I could get them all done. Um, but as with anything, every little bit we do, do uh, helps. If you enjoyed this video while I was making strawberry preserves, be sure to click the one coming up here now um, where I made peach jelly last spring. Glad you got to see this me again. This is spicy. No! Bye!